Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at form objects inside LiveWire 3. So form objects allow us to refactor our components and kind of extract out our public properties into their own form objects, especially if you have a lot of public properties. This was an issue in LiveWire 2. There wasn't really kind of a package provided way to extract out your public properties. In LiveWire 3, you can actually do that. So let's take a look at an example. I have a simple contact us form with an email, a subject, and a message and I have valuation, very simple component. And this is a component uh, code. Here I have defined all my public properties with the validations and then I have a method to handle the form submission that just runs validate, sends a flash message and then resets all the properties. And here I have a comment for sending email. We're kind of pretending that we're sending an email right now for just testing purposes. So in order to extract all these public properties into a form object, you need you first need to create a form object and it is done by using artisan. So you can go ahead and go open up your terminal and type in php artisan livewire form. That's the command for it and then provide the form name. So here I'm going to say contact us form because this is a contact us page. So hit enter and LiveWire will go ahead and inside your app directory, LiveWire, create a new directory of forms where all your forms will reside. And then basically you should now have a new file with the you know, form name you created. So in my case, it's contact us for. And you can go ahead and now extract or cut all of your public properties that you want inside that form object. So that's the first step. And then you need to define a new public property of type contact us form so something like this public contact us form form okay so you can basically define a prop uh, basically a property of type contact us form now the property name can be anything here i'm using form this could be user this should be contact form you can name it whatever you like i'm just going to go ahead and use form now one more thing you need to do is you need to also update your blade files okay so I'm going to go ahead and open up my blade file here, guys. And there is a bunch of HTML. You can kind of ignore them. The only thing that matters is this input here. And we are doing a wire model, right? To model or bind our pop property with the input. Now that we are using forms, you need to basically prefix your form name or property name before each of the single properties inside that form, right? So you need to basically prefix that before each of them. So basically this is how it is. You need to do form email. Okay. So this is the new way of doing it. If you're using form objects. And if I had, let's say another copy, maybe another form of the exact same thing user, I would say maybe user dot email. Okay. So prefix it with the property name. And you also need to do the exact same thing for your error messages. Okay. So if you're doing validation, you need to do it for those as well. And as a matter of fact, because I have three other properties, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this for those as well. And that's all you have to do on your blade files. Now, in this case, I don't really want this user part. One is enough, but that's it. And this should now go ahead and work. So I'm going to go ahead and reload the page. We might get an error and I'll explain in a second, but I'm going to hit send. The validation does work. So library is smart enough to do that. I'm going to fill an actual form. And the form submission was successful. However, we are getting an error of cannot assign null to property. And the reason because we are getting this error is because of this dot reset. It's trying to reset form into a null. So one way you can fix this is basically instead of this dot reset, do this dot form dot reset. And this will go ahead and reset the actual form properties, which is email, subject, and message. So this should go ahead and fix our error. I'm gonna try again, guys. Submit, and we get a flash message. Very nice. Now, another use case you might have, guys, is in terms of validation. So let's say I have another public property on my form. I'm going to say uh, public test. And I'm going to give it some basic validation rules. Now, in the documentation, it mentions that if you're using annotations, the validation happens automatically. That doesn't seem to be the case right now. It might be changed later on. So if there is, I'll make a video about it. But if you have something like this, you, you, you have other properties besides your form, you will have some issues, okay? So in this case, I'm submitting the form, but I also have an extra public property. So if we go ahead and we try this, I'm going to fill out my form and submit it. The form isn't actually being submitted. And the reason is the validation for this test is failing. So instead of this.validate, what you can do is you can actually validate a specific form and say this.form 
dot validate and this will only validate the you know add the properties inside the form so now if i try again now we get a successful execution so you can go ahead and access the form and run validate on that specific form now one more thing you can also do guys is if you want to access the form objects or properties you can go and do something like this this dot form dot maybe i'm gonna do a dd instead this dot form dot email okay you can do something like this and access any property on that form object so let's go ahead and test this out as you can see we get the email here uh, if you want all the objects you can maybe do something like form dot all and this will give you all the properties so let me try again and now we get an array of all the properties i'm going to zoom in so you guys can see a bit better so these are two possible options you have you can maybe get every individual property or get all of them which is very nice now, one more thing you may also want to do, guys, is in terms of reset, you may want to reset only specific properties. This works exactly uh, uh, the same way that regular liver properties work. So if you want to reset, for example, only object and message, you can just pass it in as arguments to this reset method. This is exactly the same way regular validation and form reset worked. So the process is exactly identical. So now if I go ahead and submit my form, and just pay attention only subject and message should get cleared and as you can see these two got cleared the email stayed the same so that's very nice as well and i think we have covered everything the last thing i want to cover guys is going to be you can also extract out or put logic inside your form objects so for example you can define any method you like inside here i can say public let's say function uh, send email and i'm going to just create a you know stop method just testing purposes and say sleep for three seconds to mock you know, us sending an email. So, and you can basically go ahead and execute this method as well inside your component. So I, what you can do is you can say this dot form dot send email. And this is also a valid code and it allows you to extract the most common functionality. You might have a form object that is you know, used multiple times. You can maybe extract the functionality inside the form object itself. So let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, the form should submit and it should take three seconds for it to, you know, show us a flash message let me reload so we lose the flash message and i'm going to hit send as you can see the reload is here one two three it should go bam as you can see it also works and that's the basics of using form objects in liver guys it should be all you need to get started and start you know extracting your properties into its own form objects now for small components it's not that useful unless you want to kind of have a reusable form object but once you start having very big form objects kind of big components i had this issue in liver 2 i had a filter box with over 12 different filter criterias and i had to you know do different tactics to refactor it but, but with liver 3 they have kind of a package supported or a built-in way to refactor our components which is very nice and that is it guys for today's episode so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section below and as always i appreciate it if you guys subscribe so you get notified of the latest episodes we will have a new crash course coming in hopefully by the end of this week so i'm super excited and i see you guys for tomorrow's video have a great day bye